Hello there, it's Claire in the Potting Shed and I thought we'd take a look at June in the Maria Turn Biodynamic Calendar. So these calendars are a really nice way to uh, just kind of optimise any influences coming from uh, the moon and the uh, other planets and they're quite simple to use once you work out a few of the basics. So I, whenever I start planning my uh, month's activities in the garden, the first thing I consider is where is the full moon? So if you look at the solar and lunar aspects column here, this is the new moon, so that's on 10th of June. And then this is the full moon, that's on the 24th. And the full moon I've found over the years that if I have any sewing to do, I try to do it in this week before the full moon. I, uh, I think it gives me a much quicker and stronger germination. So my plants get off to a really good start. So um, you might want to think about sowing uh, biennials, the foxgloves and wallflowers. There's a flower day here. That would be a good day to sow those. You might want to be sowing beetroots and carrots. They would Then you'd look for root days. Here's a few here. And um, always the, nice to keep sowing the lettuce. And uh, I like sowing lots of basil in the summer. And I'd look for a leaf day in this time before the full moon. The next uh, um, rhythm to look at and be aware of is this one here, the apogee, A-G there, and perigee. And this is the rhythm when the moon circles the earth, and perigee is when the moon is actually closest to the earth. And in the calendar, this is always a blank day. It's deemed um, there are no helpful influences, and it's best to avoid any sensitive work on the perigee. And the next rhythm to consider is this purple and green band here. And this is uh, another rhythm. So the moon has lots of different rhythms. I think they're about 37. And um, this ascending descending moon is this purple and green banding. So we start June with the ascending moon. That's when the, the fortnight when the moon is getting higher and higher in the sky. And then the, the green band is the opposite, the descending moon, and the moon gets lower and lower in the sky. And this has an effect on the uh, parts of the plant that are more um, vital or uh, uh, active. So in the ascending moon, we're looking at working with the uh, above ground parts of the plant. Um, so in this period, and also these few days at the end as well, very good time to think about applying the horn silica um, that would be an early morning spray and you would be looking to um, see what parts of the plants were starting to develop for the crop you want. So, for example, if you're growing some uh, French beans or runner beans and you start to get the flowers and then you start to get the little baby beans developing, then that would be a good time to spray on a fruit day um, early in the morning and that would enhance the plant's ability to develop good quality nutritious fruits or beans um, so if you were wanting to um, spray tomatoes that would also be in this fruit time um, if you were wanting to spray with the horn silica your lettuce you'd be looking for the leaf days and if you wanted to spray your spuds if the, your potatoes are starting to flower so they're starting to develop the potatoes underground you'd be looking at root days in this ascending moon time. Although some people say flower days are good for potatoes, so you can, you can choose. So this ascending moon time is also um, a good time to think about applying foliar feeds. So you're spraying onto the leaves. And if you've got something like tomatoes and you need to pinch out the shoots, it's actually quite a good time to work in this uh, ascending moon with uh, tomato attention. And harvesting, if you were harvesting for processing, so um, it's probably a little bit early to think about strawberries, but I'm a real fan of straw making strawberry jam. And I would always aim to do it on a fruit day in this ascending moon time. So it's when the upper parts of the plant are more active. So the opposite to that rhythm is this, uh, what's called in the calendar, northern transplanting time. This is the two weeks when the moon is descending. And this is a good time to work with the root and soil connection. 
So planting is ideal in this time. Um, and you might be wanting to plant, um, I'm trying to think what I've got in my greenhouse. I'll probably have courgettes to plant in this time and always lettuce um, and uh, yeah, get the runner beans out as well, probably in this fortnight. And when I've planted, I like to try and uh, fit in a horn manure if possible, if it's practical. And horn manure is always best sprayed in this fortnight. Um, looking at soil activity and root activity. And if you wanted to apply feed, if you're doing a root feed that you're applying to the soil, then this again would be the best fortnight to, to do that. So it's also um, been useful to be aware of the daily rhythm that we have. So there's a, a rhythm to the day. In the morning, the earth effectively or the soil is is exhaling it's breathing out and in the afternoon and evening it's breathing in so harvest in the morning and planting watering in the afternoon and if he sounds a little bit cranky have a little go ex exploring this if you harvest cut flowers or lettuce early in the morning and then also harvest the same flowers and uh, similar plants in the evening and then just observe which keeps best and uh, you might be surprised or it might I don't know it might not make a difference but I've observed that uh, lettuce harvested in the morning keeps fresher so June is also now we've got some finally got some warmer days and warm temperatures it's a good time to think about um, paying your compost heap a bit of attention um, it's quite a good time to actually um, turn the compost heap so you can actually bring some air into it but also uh, check the water levels the moisture levels um, compost organisms need air and water to do their stuff and now the warmth is here they'll be the compost will get really busy um, and also it's um, if you're wanting to make biodynamic compost you can purchase a set of compost preparations from the biodynamic association web shop and insert those into your heap and they ensure the right microorganisms are in the heap to optimise your compost. And thinking about the wildlife in your garden, just uh, please keep the bird baths topped up. And um, something I did yesterday, I hadn't really thought about it till I read something that I have a pond in my garden, but I don't have a muddy bank. And birds and some insects, bees particularly, really appreciate having some mud um, so I filled a dish with some mud and put some stones in so any critters can climb out and I'm just going to see what happens, whether that attracts uh, some wildlife to it. And thinking of the wildlife as well, another interesting thing you can do while it's now getting starting to get hot, um, create a cool damp spot for the amphibians in your garden. So you can make a log pile in a shady corner and fill the nooks and crannies with leaves and moss and it'll create a really cool shaded uh, habitat for the frogs and the toads because they don't live in the water all year round in your pond so okay happy gardening and let's hope june is full of sunshine bye